Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel. This is my review for The Black Cauldron, which came out in 1985. It is the sixth movie in Disney's Bronze Age. This movie is quite different from some of the previous films that Disney has released. It is more of a fantasy epic in the vein of Lord of the Rings. It's not necessarily a fairy tale. The movie is about a young boy named Terran who soon finds out that his pig has magical powers and is actually a big target for the Horned King because the pig knows of the location of the Black Cauldron, which is a cauldron that could help the Horned King dominate the entire world. So Terran, along with a princess and some other friends, have to stop the Horned King from retrieving the Black Cauldron. And if possible, they have to try to destroy the cauldron. This is a movie that is so infamous within the Disney canon because it came out in the Bronze Age, which was really a downer year in terms of not just Disney, but animation in general. I mean, sure, by this point, Don Bluth has left Disney and went on to make his own movies. I mean, Secret of Nim came out three years prior to The Black Cauldron, and the following year would see the release of American Tale. But even then, with those movies, animation was not as profitable as one would think. And with this movie here, The Black Cauldron, Disney spent a lot of money on this movie. And I mean, a lot. They spent about $44 million on this film, and it was a huge bomb. This is a movie that bombed so hard that I rank it up there with movies like Cleopatra, Waterworld, or the Theatrical Cut to Justice League, where there are these huge movies uh, that have again, a lot of money put into them that did nowhere near as well as people anticipated for them to do. But over the years, the Black Cauldron has developed a cult following. A lot of people say that it's a very, very underrated Disney movie. But for some reason, I just never got around to watching The Black Cauldron. It just kind of faded into obscurity. And it wasn't until just now that I finally watched the movie. And could somebody please explain to me why this has a cult following? Because... It's not good. Like, this movie is actually pretty bad. So why is this movie bad? Well, the main reason is that it's just not very interesting. It's based off a book, so I'm actually curious to see how this book reads because it really feels like this is Disney's attempt to try to make a Lord of the Rings type movie. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody at Disney looked at Ralph Bakshi's adaptation of Lord of the Rings from 1978 and thought, we need to do something like that because there were points where I watched this movie where it reminded me very much of Bakshi's Lord of the Rings. Which leads into the biggest positive of the movie, the animation. For a movie that came out in the Bronze Age, the animation here is next level. I mean, it is gorgeous. You could clearly tell where the money went. Like, every single penny of this movie was clearly spent on the animation because it is unlike anything else within the Bronze Age of Disney animation. However, I think next week's movie might beg to differ, but we'll get to that next week. And it's got some fantastic imagery, whether it's just all around gorgeous or very creepy and haunting. This movie clearly stands out from the other animated films Disney was releasing in the Bronze Age. But really, outside of the animation, there's not much else worth talking about. The plot itself is very basic. Again, it's essentially a Lord of the Rings type quest. The characters are kind of dull. The voice acting is not that strong. And your main protagonist, Terran, is, is an idiot. When Terran is instructed to take the magical pig and pretty much keep her out of the reach of the Horned King, there's a point where they stop to get a drink of water. Terran looks into the water and imagines himself being this great noble warrior, or just all around badass. I wouldn't really say he's looking at himself to be noble, but he's fantasizing about himself. And then wouldn't you know it, oh look, the pig's gone, it's vanished, it's being chased by the Horn King's dragons, and oh, nope, there it goes. So, way to go on that, Terran. The rest of the characters are not that interesting either. The old man that accompanies Terran and the princess doesn't really seem to have a reason to be with them on this quest. The princess herself has no reason at all to be a princess. I don't mind her accompanying Terran on this quest, but they didn't really have to make her a princess. 
Uh, the little dog creature, I didn't find him annoying, but his voice was very reminiscent of Gollum. And I know this movie predates the Lord of the Rings trilogy where Andy Serkis gave us the iconic version of Gollum that we think about, but being somebody who watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy before the Black Cauldron, this character really reminded me of Gollum. And like I said, the plot itself is just not that interesting. And the way the movie just kind of wraps itself up, it has that really underwhelming feeling like, oh, oh, that's it? Well, huh, that was very anticlimactic. So I can definitely see why this movie flopped. Is it as bad as its low box office return would lead you to believe? I don't think so, because like I said, the money was well spent. You can tell where every single cent of this movie went, because it is a gorgeous movie animation-wise. But, you know, outside of the animation, the rest of the elements just do not help in the slightest. And in hindsight, I guess while the animation is beautiful, there probably wasn't a need for this to cost as much as it did, especially when you consider that the top three movies of 1985, Rocky IV, Rambo First Blood Part II, and Back to the Future, all cost less than The Black Cauldron. I think Rambo First Blood Part II cost around the $20 million range. Hell, Blade Runner from 1982 costs less than The Black Cauldron. So this is kind of a tough movie to rate because I have to give credit where credit is due with the animation. It is absolutely astonishing. And if the truth came out that this movie was just a big test reel for the quality of the animation in the Disney Renaissance, then I'll give them a hand for that. But the story, characters, and everything else just feels very lackluster. So. I have to say, watch at your own risk. I think it's a movie that's important to see, especially if you're a big Disney animation fan. Maybe not so much for the quality of the movie and the content, but more the history of this movie. Because this is one of Disney's biggest bombs, you just have to see it for yourself because it's an important part of their history. Just. Don't expect anything really grand. Or who knows, maybe you might end up in that cult following that adores this movie. And if you do, then that's awesome. Good for you. But for me, I was kind of excited for this movie, but I just didn't think it was worth it at the end. I could definitely see why it was a big bomb, but it's not that bad. It's a bad movie, but it's not even close to the worst thing Disney Animation has released. And there you go, that's my review for The Black Cauldron. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Now next week we're gonna be talking about my favorite Disney movie within the Bronze Age, The Great Mouse Detective. When I reviewed The Fox and the Hound and said that the next two movies following it would be movies that I'm really excited to talk about, uh, this was the second one because well, we'll have to wait till next week for me to tell you why I'm excited to talk about The Great Mouse Detective. But first, I want to know what you guys think about The Black Cauldron. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one. Hello everyone, I just wanted to say thank you all for watching my review for The Black Cauldron. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, go check out my Twitch channel, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day, and take care of yourselves.